How would you drive a nail into the wall? You'll take the nail, place it over the wall and hit it with a hammer on the head and you keep hitting until the nail goes inside. Now, some of you might be thinking that why do I even need to use a hammer? I can perhaps use my water bottle. It's made up of stainless steel, it's sturdy and it can do the job well. Correct, but that's not the point here. Different tools exist for a reason and as you become a professional, it isn't about doing everything using one tool, but it's about knowing which one is the right tool for what kind of situation. So in this video, I'm going to talk about all the different types of tools which are present for UX designers and which one you must learn and which ones you may skip. So stay tuned. people welcome to my channel this is Sapta and if you're here for the first time this is the place where I help designers build and scale their career with tips suggestions and tutorials so if you're into it don't forget to hit the subscribe button every tool in this world has two main criteria it should deliver high quality output in the least possible time and effort the more this difference is the better the tool is considered I have a masterclass on motion design using Adobe After Effects right here in this channel and seeing some of those tutorials some people comment saying that why do I need to use After Effects? I can do the same using Adobe XD as well. Yes, you can. And guess what? I can do some of these using Keynote as well. Keynote is a presentation maker. It is the PowerPoint equivalent of Mac laptops. But again, that's not the point here. There are many, many other complex things which cannot be done using Keynote and XD and you will have to use After Effects or a similar tool to achieve those kind of outputs. And unless you know how to use the tool, you will never be able to do them. You will be restricted by what your tool lets you do. Just like if my nail is big, maybe I cannot use this bottle to drive it. I will have to use this hammer. And if this nail is even bigger, maybe I'll have to use a much bigger hammer than this one. So tools exist for a reason. Now, there are so many different tools which are available that for a beginner UX designer, it might get really overwhelming. So based on their function, I have grouped them under three broad categories. The first broad category is designing tools. There are a bunch of tools which fall under this category. Figma, Sketch, Adobe XD, InVision Studio, to name a few. These are the tools using which you create interfaces or UI as we call them. You know all the UI components like uh, buttons, forms, radios, checkboxes and all? All these are made using this tool. As a professional designer, 90% of the time when you're doing hands-on design, you'll be doing it using one of these tools. Now, which of these tools should you learn? Any of them. Any one of them. Honestly, there isn't a whole lot of things to learn in these tools because things are pretty intuitive. Most of the people, including me, could start using the tool right away the first time they open it without having to go through any tutorials or anything because things are pretty straightforward out there. And these different tools, they're very similar to each other as well. They have same kind of features, similar flexibility and so on. So which means if you learn to use one, you automatically know how to use the remaining. Of course, you know, some of the controls could be in different places and all, but that's about it. The fundamentals remain same. Well, there are some differences between these tools as well, but they're not big that it would affect any of your major workflows. Also, these tools are trying very hard to gain the market share, which means if a particular tool has a feature, which the others do not, it's highly possible that the others are also planning to bring the same feature into their tool because competition is cutthroat. Oh yeah, there are two things that you need to keep in mind. If you're a designer who works in a team and who collaborates a lot while designing, you might want to pick Figma, especially now that we all are working from home. In Figma, multiple designers can work on the same file in real time, just like Google Docs. You'll actually see the pointers of other designers moving around and you can also see the changes being made by them in real time. So it's very good for collaboration and working together in a team. It can run on a browser as well. So platform-wise compatibility is not an issue at all. And as of October 2020, no other tool offers this kind of flexibility. The second thing that you need to keep in mind is if you're a beginner and you're looking for a free tool, then Sketch is probably not the one for you. Because Sketch is the only tool in this group which is not free. It has a trial period of 30 days and after that, you are supposed to pay. You need to pay. Also, Sketch is available only for Mac at the moment and it's not available for Windows or any other platform. The remaining tools are free, at least for an individual level, and they're available for both Windows and Mac. 
The second broad category is prototyping tools. A prototype is a model or a sample which looks and feels like a real one, even though it's not a real one. So for a prototype of an app to look and feel real, it needs to be interactive. That is, when you tap on a button or some element inside, it should change based on your input. Now that means that all the video prototypes that you see, they aren't prototypes in real sense because they're not interactive, it's just a video which is playing. They may look real, but they will not feel real unless you get to operate them. So to create interactive prototypes, there are another bunch of tools available for that. The first one is basic prototyping, which can be done using the tools, the designing tools which I've just spoken about. The tools like Sketch, Figma, Adobe XD and InVision Studio, all of them have their prototyping capabilities as well. In these basic prototypes, you can select one element in the design and link it to another page. That is when you interact with that element, be it a button or a card, when you tap on it, it can go to that other screen. And you can also select what kind of animation would happen when this transition happens. You can select the duration, time, and also do a fair amount of morphing between these two states. These kind of prototypes are good for showing one complete flow, you know, a series of screens. You tap, 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 and then you reach the end. That's about it. Nothing more. Also, the frame rates of these animations are usually low at around 30 FPS, and most of the modern phones these days supports up to 60 FPS, which means when you see one of these prototypes, you know that something isn't real because you're used to seeing the real apps which run at a much higher frame rate, around 60 or so. In spite of these reasons, it's still one of the most preferred ways of prototyping amongst many designers because it's very easy to make. There are people who like to do every kind of prototyping with these. It's not bad, just that it has some limitations. Now that brings us to advanced prototyping, which can be done using tools like Principle, Protopy, Framer, and Origami, to name a few. These tools are extremely powerful and they can be used to create lifelike prototypes without the need of any coding. Framer once upon a time used to be code-based, where you had to write code to make a prototype on Framer, but uh, in its latest avatar, it's not like that. They've hidden the complete coding aspects of it in the backend, and it's just GUI. You use it like any other tool, so they have removed the coding aspect of it completely. Because we all know, designers do not like to code. <laughs> One of the biggest benefits of Protopie is that you can use the hardware and the sensor capabilities of your smartphone in your prototypes, like tilt, sound, compass, proximity sensor, haptic feedback, live text fields, cameras, and so on. And all these makes it extremely powerful and helps you make super realistic prototypes. A well-made prototype on Protopie, you probably won't be able to distinguish it from a real lab. It feels so real. The only con of this tool is that it's a paid tool. Well, but if you're a student and if you have a valid student ID, then it's free for you again. If you wish to learn Protopy, my designer friend Ashwin has made a series of tutorials for beginners. I will leave the link in the description. Of all these tools of uh, advanced prototyping, Principle is by far the easiest and the fastest of all of them, but it loses out on the hardware capabilities which Protopy has. And also, Principle can run only on a Mac and it can be previewed only on an iPhone. So it works only on the Apple ecosystem. So if you're an Android user and a Windows user, Principle is probably not for you. The third broad category of tools are the auxiliary or the additional ones, like Photoshop, Illustrator, Cinema 4D, After Effects, Blender, and so on. These tools are not directly used in UX design, but they add a lot to the experience that you're designing. For example, if your UI needs a lot of illustration, then you might want to learn Adobe Illustrator. Yes, you can do a bit of basic illustration in the designing tools as well, like Figma XD and Sketch, but for anything complex, it's much easier and faster to do it in Adobe Illustrator. If your UI needs a lot of photo edits and manipulation, Photoshop is your tool. And if you're into hardcore animations that you want to implement in your UI, then you need to use Adobe After Effects because using this tool, you can literally animate anything and implement it in your app or in your web using Lottie. If you want to learn motion design using Adobe After Effects, I have a masterclass on the same right here in this channel. I will leave it linked in the description. If you want to use 3D illustrations or 3D models in your UI, you know the kind of stuff in which you can swipe and rotate and see a model from different directions and maybe even see it in context using AR then you might want to learn a bit of 3D modeling and that can be done using tools like Cinema 4D and Blender. For example, you can model something in Cinema 4D, animate it in 3D space, 
bring it to After Effects, export it using Lottie, and then implement it using Webflow to create an Apple AirPods-like website where, you know, 3D things move and rotate as you scroll. How cool! But you need to remember that Cinema 4D is a paid tool. It's not free. It comes with a free trial of 14 days and after that, you need to make the payment. But Blender is an equally good free alternative for doing the same. So you might want to try your hands on Blender. So many tools. Now, which one should you learn? Ideally, you should learn one from each of these categories. That is one design tool along with its basic prototyping capabilities, one tool for advanced prototyping, and one or more tools from the auxiliary list, whatever is applicable to you. Now that still looks like a lot of tools and you might be saying that you are a beginner and you just want to get started with it. So is there any one tool that you can get started with? The answer is yes. If you want to just learn one tool, I would highly recommend you pick any one of the tool from the list of designing tools. That is anything from Sketch, Figma, Adobe XD or InVision Studio. Because like I said, 90% of the time when you're doing hands-on, you'll be using one of these tools and they have a decent prototyping capability as well. My personal preference would be Figma because Figma has all the features which every other tool that I have spoken about and along with that it's very good for collaboration as well like I had said before. And it's also free for an individual user so it just works. So that was the video folks. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite tool and which new tool do you intend to learn. If you like this video please hit the thumbs up button and share it in your network. And please, please hit the subscribe button because it motivates me to create more content for you. This is Sapta. See you guys in the next one.